In today's lesson, I'll be teaching you about the cage system. I love the cage system. It helps unlock the fretboard so you can move from one end of your instrument to the other seamlessly in any key. As you can see below, this is a pretty long video, but that's because we're gonna be working together and practicing. I'm not just showing you information, but we're working through it together. So grab your guitar and let's get started. Welcome to day one of your cage boot camp. In this lesson, we are gonna be talking about our C shape, which is based off of our C chord. I know you're familiar with the C chord, and we're gonna take this thing that you know and move it around the guitar so you can see how this shape can help us open up the fretboard using the cage system. So let's first start by just playing the C chord. And what I want you to do is now refinger it. So instead of making it so you're using your first finger, second finger, and third finger, switch it around so you're gonna use your pinky and your third finger and your first finger. This is gonna allow us to use our first finger to mimic what a, what a capo would do. It's gonna bar down those open strings because in our C chord, we have an open G string and an open E string. So what happens is if we try to play this chord higher, it doesn't sound good. We have to, uh, uh, we have to accommodate for those open strings and by moving up the shape with this first finger, acting as a bar. So now that you are in this C shape, let's move it up. Let's move it up one fret. And now put your first finger down and put your first finger down to bar the first string, second string, and third string. You don't need to waste energy by having your first finger barring the entire, uh, the entire, the entire first fret. And it should sound like this. So I'll play it one note at a time and I want you to do the same thing. working with before, this C shape got moved up, and now it still is a C shape, but it becomes a C sharp chord using a C shape, because we've moved up one fret, so everything gets one, um, one note higher. Now the thing that I want us to start to look out for are roots. Roots are gonna be a good way to guide us through the fingerboard in all of our shapes, our C shape, A shape, G shape, E shape, and D shape. So let's go back to that C shape, in, in the original C chord position and find those roots. So in this shape, our roots are on the fifth string and second string. Notice they sound the same, but they're an octave difference. On our fifth string is what we would call the bass note, the root, it's the lowest note of the chord and that's gonna be one of our guide tones. And our next root is one octave higher on the second string So now go back and move it up a half step. So now we are playing our C shape and our roots are still on the fifth string and second string. But it's no longer C, it's C sharp because we moved up. Now the same thing is true if we move it up one more fret. So check it out. Now I'm gonna be, so my pinky is on the fifth string. I mean fifth fret, excuse me are still fifth string and second string. These are two D notes and we're using our C shape. Notice it came from the C chord, but it's a C shape that is being brought up and you can use this shape all over the guitar. C shape, roots, fifth string, second string. Your first finger bars behind it to act as that capo that would exist. Now this concept stays true no matter where we are on the fretboard. We started in C, went up to C sharp, then went up to D, and the same thing is true even if we go all the way up to something like G. Now if you're having trouble figuring out where we are, remember the roots are our guide. So when we we're back down here on the on in C, string that third fret is a C note so we know it's a C chord. On the fourth fret that's a C sharp note so we know it's a C sharp chord but once again always using our C shape. On the fifth fret of our fifth string that's a D note so we know it's a D chord. Now if we go up to the tenth fret we know on the tenth fret of our fifth string that's a G. So that means this is a G chord in our C shape with our roots on the fifth string of the 10th fret and the A 
eighth fret on the second string. My homework for you today is four different exercises exploring the C shape. Now, I want you to do these four exercises two times total. It should take you about 30 minutes and you can take a little break in between. Now, I know it may feel tedious because these exercises aren't particularly exciting, but this is the sort of thing that will really set you up to understand your fretboard and have a deeper understanding of how to play the guitar. My first exercise for you is going to be playing our C chord and then playing the roots. It'll sound like this. You'll play the C chord for one bar. One, two, three, four. And then two beats of one root and then two beats of your higher root. So one, two, one, two. So when it's put all together, it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. So follow along with me and we're gonna do this eight times together. Notice I am playing in this way where my first finger is free because I'm trying to set up for later shapes where I do want to bar my first finger. If that's super challenging, don't worry, just play your C chord. And this is gonna be the C shape you'll be using. Just work on it one day at a time. It will get easier. I know some of these chords feel weird because your muscles don't know how to get there yet, but you will get there, just be patient. So without further ado, I'll count you in and then we'll dive into this exercise eight times in a row. One whole bar on C, two beats on our root, which is our fifth, st fifth string, and then two beats on our other root, which is on our second string. One, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. C. Now I'm gonna have you dive into the same thing over a G chord using our C shape. What I would suggest is getting into that shape we were playing before where you're barring your first finger. If that's challenging, don't worry. You have two other options. You can not bar your first finger so you can get used to using your pinky third finger and second finger, or you can just play your C chord that you're used to playing and slide it up all the way so your third finger is on the 10th fret. Now let's try it. I'll count you in. One, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. I want you to try the same thing on a D chord. Now think about it for a sec before I tell you what fret is a D note on on our fifth string because that's where we're going to put our pinky. Fifth fret, yes. So get into this chord and play this shape if you can with your first finger barring. If you can't, like I said before, you can always just play this normal C shape without the fingers moving in the bar. 
Um, but with just as a reminder, if you do strum that, it's gonna be a different chord because of those open strings. Okay, so I'm gonna get into the C, the C shape, but on a D chord, so my pinky's on the fifth fret. It sounds like this. And we're gonna do that same exercise one more time. One, two, three, four. Nice work. Now I want you to combine everything we just did in exercise one, two, and three, and put it into one exercise. We're gonna play that same thing we just did with whole note and then root two beats, root two beats. We're gonna do that twice on C. Then we're gonna move all the way up to G and do that two times through in G. And then go back down to D and do that, th that same thing twice in D. And we'll go around that whole cycle of C, G, D two times, playing each chord sequence twice. I'll count you in. So follow along with me. One, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. C, C, one more time. C. Get ready for G, two, C, up to G. C, G, two, three, four, G, two, G, one more time. G, two, three, four, about to move back down to D. G, now D. Congratulations on finishing day one. Welcome to day two. What we're gonna be exploring today is our A shape, which is all based around that cage system. While I know this all can seem kind of tedious, and it is, make sure you are patient, because this kind of thing is really how you're gonna understand the fretboard and grow as a guitarist. So instead of thinking of it, these things as exercises, try to get in a more meditative state. That helps me a lot when I'm doing things that can feel tedious and are tedious. Um, but you know, try to make sure the sound is good, breathe with it. While it may seem a little hippy dippy, it really helps. Now to recap what we did so far, we checked out that C shape, which is based off of a C chord and explored it around the fretboard. We checked out C, G, and D. What I would recommend doing is also explore other chords. You know, there's 12 different chords that you can explore using that shape. Move that around the guitar. And remember that we were really focusing in on those roots because the roots are the guide for how to see the whole fretboard. We're gonna do that same sort of thing using our A shape today. Our A shape is based off of this A chord. You may play it like this using your first, second, and third finger. Maybe you learn to play it like this using your second, third, and fourth finger. 
or just using your first finger. It's all the same chord. And so with this A shape, it's actually a bar chord is what it's based off of. So you know this A shape, and if you move it up to the third fret with your first finger, it becomes a C chord. Now this bar chord is based off your A shape, like I just said, so now follow me. I'm gonna take this bar chord shape and move it back down so I have an open A. Notice it's an A chord. This is our A chord, which is also our A shape. So what happens if I take this A shape and move it up one fret? It becomes an A sharp bar chord based off that A shape. Same thing, now if I move it up one more fret, it's a B bar chord, B chord based off that A shape. One more fret, same thing. It's a C chord, which is based off of our A shape because of this A shape right here, which started here. I wanna make sure we know these roots because everything is based off those roots that like I've said many times, that's kind of our guide. It lets us know what chord we're actually playing regardless of the shape. Um, so in A, our roots are fifth string. That's our root, our bass note, and also our second, our third string. Third string and fifth string. I'm gonna move this shape up to C. So my first finger will be on a C note, and then I'll bar my third finger, which gives us that C chord using our A shape. And just like in our C shape, our, our roots don't change. No matter where we are on the fretboard, our roots are always on that fifth string, and now third string. Can you hear how they're the same note, but just an octave apart? C and then C, an octave higher on our third string. And there, notice there are two frets apart, third fret and fifth fret. So that is our A shape, which is the bar chord you should be familiar with. And I want you to notice something interesting about how these shapes are starting to connect. We will dive, in this, we will dive into this deeper when we get into our exercises, but notice this. This C bar chord, which is based off our A shape, our roots on that fifth string, that C note. What about our C shape, C chord? We have that same root. They share a root. C shape, A shape, and they're both C chords. The same thing is true. Let's move it two frets higher. A shape, using our D chord, because the root is a D note. C shape, D chord. We have our D chord in our C shape with our root on the fifth string, fifth fret. And then we have our D chord using our A shape. Our root is on the fifth string, fifth fret. These shapes connect. Our C shape and our A shape connect. So get that in your mind because we're going to be building upon that. My homework for you today is five different exercises. These five exercises should take about 30 minutes total. A couple pointers. If any of the exercises are feeling easy, feel free to move forward to the next exercise. Also, if your hand is getting tired, you don't have to leave it pushed down. My hand gets tired doing this too. For example, you could do something like this. Just hit it. Two, three, four, C, C. You don't have to keep your hand pushed down the whole time because that's very tiring. And we want to save our hands and not overtire them out. Once again, get into that meditative state with all of this. I know it's tedious, but this is a great way to really understand your fretboard. Your first exercise is going to be really similar to yesterday's exercise. We're going to be playing our A shape on a C chord, and we'll strum the chord, and then we'll play root, root, two beats each. So just like yesterday, follow along with me. I'll count you in. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, root, two, root, again, C. C two, 
now we're gonna continue to build on that and move that shape around the guitar. We'll be doing it on a G chord, which is on our 10th fret, because that's where our root is. There's your G note. Follow along with me. And one thing to make note of, if you're struggling finding these notes, it's okay to look, but also it's okay to close your eyes and mess up a little bit because that is how you're gonna be growing with this. Um, don't, don't get frustrated if you hit some wrong notes. This is a part of the process of growing. There's a little bit of pain. So breathe in, breathe out. We got this. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Now, for our third exercise, I want you to play the same thing except on a D chord. So our D chord starts on the fifth fret because that is our D root. Follow along with me. One, two, three, four. Now, just like in day one, we're gonna be combine those three exercises together and play C two times through the sequence, G two times through the sequence, and then D two times through the sequence, two times all the way through total. I do wanna say, I know this is really meticulous. If you feel great about it, you can always skip ahead or not necessarily play all eight times, for example, of me going D. If you feel really good about it, play it a couple times and move on to the next exercise. One other note, if your hand is getting tired, you don't have to push down the entire time. If we're on D, for example, you can go D, two, three, four, D, D. Because I know this can be really physically demanding. These bar chords are challenging, so don't be frustrated about that. My hand gets tired doing this too, and I've been playing guitar a really long time. Okay. Let's dive into this exercise. So once again, follow along with me. Um, one, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. C, C, one more time. C, two, three, four. C, now we're gonna go up to G. Work. 
Exercise five is gonna build on everything that you've gone over so far. We're gonna take our C shape and our A shape and put them together using that same sequence we've been doing where we strum the chord for a bar and then play each root for two beats. We'll do that, so for example, this is what it would look like in C. We play C chord, C shape two, three, four, root, root, then play our C chord, A shape, and root, root. So we'll do each of these twice, and we'll go C, G, D. That whole thing, two times around. So we're building on everything that we've been working on. If you feel good on this, you're in a really good place to move forward. One, two, three, four. C shape, two, three, four. C root, C root one more time. C, two, three, four, C. Now move to our A shape of our C chord. C, two, three, four, C. C one more time. Two, three, four. Get ready for your G chord C shape. Two, three, four. One, two, three. One more time. Two, three, four. Now our same thing. A shape. Two, three, four. One, two. One more time. Two, three, four. We're going to go down to a D chord C shape. Nice work, that one is challenging. You've made it to day three, which is all about the G shape. Before we dive into the G shape, I want you to do a quick recap of what we've done so far, which is our C shape based off the C chord, which is mobile. So for example, if it's a D chord using our C shape, sounds like this. Remember where our roots, fifth string and second string, and then yesterday what we talked about was that A shape. And so remember, this is what it looks like if we're playing a D chord and our roots are on the fifth string and third string. We're gonna build on that material using our G shape, which as you may have guessed is based off this G chord. With this G chord, there's three different roots. The three roots are on our sixth string. That's our bass note. And then we have third string, one octave higher. And then this is a little different. We actually have three roots in this chord. One octave even higher, which is on our first string. And one way to kind of remember that is thinking about our guitar, we have two E strings. And these are always octaves of each other. They're always the same two notes. So in our G chord, in our sixth string, third string and first string root. This shape is pretty crazy to try to play. And a lot of what this cage system is, is visualization. So we wanna be able to see and understand where these chords are and where these shapes are and where our roots are. Um, so for example, if I move this up to C, 
thinking, where's our, our root on a six string? Right here, six string C root. Playing this shape is, is nothing I would ever ask you or anyone to do. I can barely play this, it's challenging. I would never really play this as a chord. I would visualize it as a shape, which is what this cage system is all about. Visualizing these shapes so we have access to, this, to the guitar, the fretboard, in any key, anywhere. We'll get deeper into all of that. So as a reminder, we are in this C, C chord in a G shape. So we are based off that six string, eighth fret root, C root. We're gonna break it into two pieces instead of strumming this whole crazy thing, which is not fun to play. I would never tell anyone to play this chord because it's challenging. It's all about that visualization. The first part is our pinky on the root, and then our second finger is one fret behind it on the seventh fret of our fifth string. And our first finger is two frets behind that on the fifth fret of the fourth string. And it is all based off that G shape because there's the same distance between each of those notes. So that's part one. And the second part is on the higher three strings. We bar our first finger on the fifth fret in this case and put our pinky on the eighth fret that higher root. So there's one root in the lower shape, which is our sixth string, and there's two roots in the higher shape, which is our third st string and our first string. So while it's coming from this G shape, move forward with this imaginary bar right here, we're breaking it down into two pieces, lower three strings, higher three strings. So when we're getting into all these exercises, focus in on those roots. Sixth string, third string, first string. We've made it to day three homework. With this, there are six different exercises that I want you to do, and they should take about 30 minutes. Exercise one, two, and three, while important, exercise five and six are really a culmination of everything we've worked on. So be sure you dive the deepest into that and really understand this. I know it gets monotonous, so a couple suggestions get into that meditative state. And also if you feel really good about exercise one, move on to exercise two, same thing with, with three. If you feel really good about exercise two and three, you know, move forward. Exercise five and six is where it's at. So get into that one, make sure you understand those really well. Happy practicing. I will see you back here tomorrow and we will explore our E shape, a shape I love very much. For exercise one, you're gonna be building on what you did for exercise one in day one and day two. So we're keeping everything consistent. We'll start in a C chord using our G shape. And instead of strumming the chord, because like we just talked about, that's no fun, we're not gonna do that. I want you instead just to focus on the roots. And we're gonna play each root two times um, and then go back down to that middle root. So it's consistent and it's two whole bars. It's gonna sound like this. Lowest root, two. Middle root. Highest root, middle root. And they're two beats each. So follow along with me and we'll go through this a handful of times. One, two, three, four. One, two. Be sure to visualize the shape. C, 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 C. Again, C, 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 C. Again, C, C, C. One more time. Once again, it's all about that visualization. Exercise number two is really similar, except in the key of G, using our G shape. So based off this guy, but we're not necessarily gonna get into the shape. Let's do the same thing and, and play our root, 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 root. And it may actually be cool just to stay in that, that shape because it's gonna help you visualize for all the other shapes we're gonna be doing. I mean, it'll help you visualize for the other chords we'll be doing using that same G shape. 
follow along with me and we'll play those three roots in the same way as we did in exercise one, except this time in the key of G instead of the key of C. One, two, three, four, G. Exercise three, same concept except in the key of D. And once again, we're gonna be using this half and that half of the shape to visualize it because that's no fun to play. Okay, so follow along with me and I want you to be playing those roots again. The sixth string root, third string root, and first string root, all based off that G shape. And we're in the key of D, which is starts on the 10th fret with your pinky there. One, two, three, Four, D, D, D. Again. Again, D, two, D, D. Again, and D, two, D, D. Two more times, D. Now I want you to do exercise four with me. And this is the same as we did for day one and day two. We're building up from exercise one, two, and three. Combining C to G to D. And we'll go through that cycle two times through. One, two, three, four. C, C, C. One more time, C. to G and G. One more time, G. Up to D, here we go, D. Last time. Get ready to back, go back to the top, C. You did it. Okay, are you ready? This is where it really starts to count. I want to combine our A shape and our G shape. And this is, the, we're gonna do the same sort of thing using the same sequences we've used before. We'll go in C, and then we'll do the same thing in G, and then the same thing in D. One note about our G shape. We're actually gonna play something kind of crazy. We're gonna play up because I want you to see how these connect. So if this is our G chord using our A shape, we're actually gonna, instead of going down here for our G chord, G shape, we're gonna play an octave up, which is the 15th fret. If you don't have room for that on your guitar, you can play back down here because this is all about visualizing how they connect. So if you can kind of squeeze forward, you might not have that cutaway. Then try to just use your fingers to get that G root, G root, G root, and connect it to this A shape. We're gonna start using our A shape, C chord, and then go up to our G shape, C chord. 
And now the thing I want you to notice is once again, how they connect. These roots are how, is how they all connect. So this third string, third string root on our A shape connects to the third string root on the back of our G shape. Notice it's coming from that same place. G shape, A shape. Follow along. This root is connecting the A shape to the G shape. Okay, so let's try that exercise. We'll spend, we'll go to C, A shape, C, G shape, and then do that same thing in the key of G and D. One, two, three, four, C. So this exercise is really important. Exercise six combines everything we've done in day one, day two, and day three. So make sure you really understand this one before moving on. What we're gonna do is, as you may guess, um, you may have already guessed, is we're gonna combine our C shape, our A shape, and our G shape using that same sequence that we've been using and do it in C, in G, and in D. Okay, so we're gonna start on our C shape, then do our A shape, then do our G shape in the key of C, same kind of concept in the key of G, same concept in the key of D. C shape, A shape, G shape, because I want you to see how each shape connects. The C shape connects to our A shape with that root. Our A shape connects to that G shape with that root on the third string. Roots, roots, Roots are the key to visualizing this fretboard using our caged system. Follow along with me. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. C. C. One more time. One, two, three, four. To the A shape C chord. One, two, three, four. shape C chord, G, C, C, C. One more time, C, C. Now we're gonna dive into the G 
key of G, C shape. So if you feel good on this, then you're in a really great place to move forward to the next lesson. Welcome to day four, which is all about the E shape. Based off this E chord, one of my very favorite chords in the whole wide world. That's a free fun fact for you. Okay, so this E shape, when you move it forward, becomes a bar chord that you're familiar with. You know this F bar chord right here? And how when you move it up to the eighth fret, it becomes a C bar chord. This bar chord is a part of that cage system. It is our E shape. So pay attention. Notice how this, I'm playing this E chord, flipping my fingers around. So my first finger is free. Shift it up one fret, flatten my first finger, strum a chord, and it's an F chord. One fret higher than E. And this is gonna be the mobile shape we use for our E shape, which is the fourth shape of our cage system. We're gonna be starting like we have been in C, so that's our eighth fret. And once again, roots, roots, roots. I know I'm like a broken record, but I want you to get those roots in your head. Um, roots in this case are sixth string, fourth string, and first string. So we have three different octaves of the root. We have lowest C root in this case, middle C root, which is that middle octave, and then the highest octave, which is C as well. And as always, notice how they connect. All of these connect. Remember how C, that C shape using this fifth string root connected to our fifth string root in our A shape, and then that third string root from our A shape connected to that third string root from our G shape. Now check it out, this sixth string root from our G shape in the key of C connects to that sixth string root in our E shape. Do you see how we just got through four different chords that are all C using these four cage shape? C chord, C chord, C, and C. So we're starting to get, to get through this fretboard using these cage shapes. So you don't, you're not stuck with one C, but you got four C so far. So if you're feeling good from lesson one, which was C shape, lesson two, which was our A shape, and then that lesson three, day three, which was our G shape, get ready for day four, which is all about that E shape. Are you guys ready for some homework using this E shape? What we're gonna be doing is doing a handful of exercises. The first two exercises are just isolating this E shape and looking at it in the key of C and the key of G. And then as we've done before, we're gonna build on it. So we'll put those two together for exercise three. Now that part is important, but the stuff I really want you to get into is exercise five and then exercise six. That is a culmination of everything we've worked on. So it's connecting roots, it's seeing these shapes all in one key across the fretboard. And once again, I know it's monotonous, get in that meditation zone, visualize it, have fun with it, Can it make sure it's sounding good, you know, instead of just like doing it and grinding through it, be like, does this sound good? Am I at peace with my instrument? I, and yeah, I know it's, I know it's woo-woo silliness, but it really helps. Um, getting, getting in a good state of mind is so important for this kind of work. Exercise four is putting together your G shape and your E shape. So for example, in the key of C, 
you can see how those connect these two roots are the same in our G shape and our E shape. So we'll be exploring that in exercise four. And then exercise five, which is like the big one, connects our C shape to our A shape, to our G shape, to our E shape. If you have this down by the end of today, you are in great shape to continue on to the following day. So I know this stuff is gonna feel tedious, but like I've been saying, like this is the foundation of the cage system, which for me and all my students is how they really open up the fretboard. It's so you can flawlessly play from one side of your instrument to the next without getting stumbling. You know, you'll, you'll really know your fretboard. So this is the foundation. I know it's not super exciting, but take a break, dance around, jump up and down, drink some coffee, whatever helps you get in the zone, go for a walk, that helps me. Um, do those things, um, cause it's really gonna help. And also I'd say pair this stuff with creative stuff. You know, just have try to have fun and explore these shapes a little bit. And we'll get deeper into that as we move forward with different lessons, but stay patient. This is the path to unlocking this thing. Exercise one, as you may have already guessed, is really similar to our exercise one from day one, day two, and day three. So now in day four, we're gonna be taking that E shape in the key of C, which is, let's think, where's that root? It's all based on these roots. The lowest root of C is on the sixth string, eighth fret. So the sequence will go as follows. Chord, two, three, four, sixth string root, fourth string root, first string root. So it will be two and a half bars total, because it'll be four beats and then two beats, two beats, two beats. Follow along with me and we'll play through this a handful of times. One, two, three, four. Nice work there. Exercise two, we're now gonna move to the key of G and do the same thing. Use that E shape, strum the chord and play those three roots, two beats each. I know it's monotonous, but you're gonna know your roots so well by the end of this thing. Okay, G, follow along with me. E shape, so see this chord, visualize it, get it in your head. One, two, three, four. Exercise three, we're gonna combine exercise one and two, smush them together and we'll do um, the C sequence twice, the G sequence twice, and then back to the C sequence twice and back to the G sequence twice. Get ready, here we go. One, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, C, 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 strong. C, 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 one more 
our C. C. C to G. For exercise four, we're gonna be connecting our G shape and our E shape in two different keys, key of C and key of G. So just like before, I really want you to start to visualize and see how these shapes are connected because that's what caged is all about. Seeing these shapes, seeing how they're connected, being able to seamlessly go from one end of the fretboard to the next. So in C, let's just check them out in C and in G. In C, it's gonna be like this. You have that backwards backwards kind of shape, like we had talked about. These two parts of your G shape connect to your E shape, and this root on the sixth string is what ties them together. Same thing is true in the key of G. We're going to be doing this lower G now. G, G, and G connects to G, G, and G. This, these six string Gs are what tie that G shape with the E shape. We'll go through that whole sequence twice. First in C, then in G, then again in C, then finally in G. And this is a really important one, so make sure you really get it and you see it, visualize it. Press pause if you're like, I don't see it, because the seeing it is what it's all about. G shape, C, key to start. One, two, three, four, C. C, 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 one more time, C, two, C, four, C. Now to our E shape, two, three, four, C, 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 and G shape, and one, two, one, two, one, two. One more time. for our E shape in the key of G. Strong. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Back to the beginning. That C chord G shape. One more time. We're about to go to our E shape in C. And strong. Okay, this exercise is the culmination of everything we've worked on so far. Your C shape, your A shape, your G shape, and your E shape, and connecting them together. Seeing how these roots connect from one shape to the next. We're gonna do this in two keys using the same sequence we've been doing. We'll do it in the key of C and in the key of G. In the key of C, you can, we'll start with our C shape, then go to our A shape, then our G shape using those roots, and then our E shape. In the key of G, we're gonna keep going higher. So let me walk you through this. We'll do our C shape, our A shape, and then G shape up here, and all the way up on our 15th fret for that E shape. If this area is crazy on your instrument, all, all guitars, you know, we have different guitars. You may not have this huge cutaway that I have. It's okay to move back down here for our G shape and our E shape. So you would do your C shape and your A shape higher up, and your G shape and your that's also a totally cool option. Are you ready? Okay, I think I am. One, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. C, two, one more time. C, two, three, four. Now to A shape. Mm -hmm. G 
G shape, G shape and C. One more time and E shape. the beginning. One, two, three, four. I'll play it lower octave now. We made it to day five, which is all about this D shape based off the D chord. Our fifth and final shape of our cage system. We went through our C shape, our A shape, our G shape, our E shape, and then we finally made it to the D shape, which is based off this chord. So check it out, it's the same sort of thing where in our D chord, so we have to accommodate for that. And um, so how I like to play it is refinger it so I have my first finger free to play that fourth string root. Because when we're playing this D chord, we have two roots. Don't forget, it's all about them roots. Um, fourth string root, which is open in the key of D. And then on the second string. So let's refinger that shape and make it so our first finger is free. So it's still that triangle, but our, I'll walk you through it. Your middle finger, second finger, is on the third string, second fret. Your third finger, ring finger, is on the first string, second fret. And then your pinky hits that root, that D note, which is the third fret of your second string. So this is your D shape. Now what happens when you move it one fret up? We have to also put our first finger on the first fret to act as that sort of like imaginary bar or capo, because if you don't, it doesn't sound real good. Our roots are consistent. They're always going to be in our D shape. They're gonna be our fourth string and our second string. So like if I move one more fret up, it's an E chord in our D shape. Fourth string root, second string root. And the thing that's so cool about Caged, as you guys know, is they all always are connecting. 
So, and it spells the word cage, C-A-G-E-D. So in that order is how they're always gonna connect. Our E shape now connects to our D shape. So let's be now moving to the key of C. This E shape, our fourth string root, is gonna connect to our D shape fourth string root. So store that information in your head because we're gonna be using it in some of these exercises. And once we master this stuff and just play the guitar using the cage system to unlock the fretboard. Um, and I will like to say, make sure you have a good grasp on your C shape, A shape, G shape, and E shape before diving into your D shape. And we'll do some exercises later on that use all this information and put it together. Your homework for day five is all about this D shape. We're first kind of breaking down what is this D shape and how do we play it around the guitar neck? And then your later exercise are gonna use that whole concept of connecting different cage shapes together. Exercise four is a really important one. It connects your D shape with the E shape. So we go from our E shape to the D shape. And in the key of C, you can see how this connects your E shape to your D shape. But then in this last exercise, I really want you to hone in on this one. We talk about for the first time, the circular nature of the cage system. How when we end with D, it actually goes right back to C. So that D shape, the front of that, connects to the back part of our C shape. Congratulations, you're almost through this level. Stay patient, you only have a, a little bit left and I promise you it's worth it because you're really gonna have a stronger understanding of the fretboard when you finish. So now I want you to follow along with me and do our first exercise using our D shape. And uh, you know, we've we're trying to keep this consistent for you. And what I wanna do now is be in the key of C using our D shape. So it's all about those roots. And I do wanna say with this D shape, it's hard because I think we're so used to knowing the roots on our sixth string and our fifth string, and we don't know like the, the letters of uh, like all the note letters on the fourth string as well, but you can still use your sixth string root to find your fourth string root because that whole octave thing. So if you know this is a C, then you know on the fourth string, that's a C. And then you can put your first finger there, and boom, you got yourself a D shape. So we're gonna use this D shape, which has our first finger on the 10th fret of our fourth string. And our next root is the, th is the 13th fret of our second string. So we'll use the same sequence as before, where we're gonna strum for a whole measure, and then do two beats on one root, and then two beats on the higher root. Follow along with me. We'll do it uh, a handful of times together. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Again. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Again, C chord. Two, three, four, C. C one more time. Two, three, four. We got this. Our second exercise, we're gonna do the same thing as exercise one, except in the key of G. So we'll be using our D shape in the key of G to play that sequence through a handful of times. Our root is on the fifth string of the fourth fret. Notice there's that one fret in between them. That's a good way to remember it. And also if you think back to this D chord, which is the foundation of the D shape, that first fret has no fingers. So there is that one fret of nothing happening. So now let's go back to G. And let's drum along. One, two, three, four.
exercise three, we'll combine what, what you just did in exercise one and two together. We'll do that same sequence in C twice, then down to G twice, up to C twice, then back down to G twice. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Down to G. In exercise four, I want you to connect your E shape to your D shape. We've talked about this a little bit, but I really want you to pay attention to how the shapes and those roots connect together. That's really the foundation of what we're doing here. We're seeing these shapes and connecting them across the fretboard in really any key. Because I don't want you to be bogged down by keys because these shapes are a way to kind of unlock that and play, play across the fretboard. We'll do this first in C. So notice how your E shape, this fourth string root connects to your fourth string root in your D shape. And we'll play it the same sequence we've been playing for all of this um, with a chord and then you strum each of the roots for two beats using our E shape in C, then our D shape in the key of C, then our E shape in G, and our D shape in the key of G. And we'll go between those two, two times total. So I'll count you in. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again. Two, three, four. And our D shape. Two, three, four. Again. Two, three, four. Down to G key of G E shape. For exercise five, we're gonna see how the cage system is circular. C connects to A, connects to G, connects to E, connects to D. We've talked about that, but D connects back to C. And we're gonna explore that in this exercise. For example, when we're in the key of C, here's our D shape. And this second string root actually connects to the backside of this C shape. You can actually kind of see this D shape in your C shape. Do you see how they are? there's so much overlap? So notice those roots are connecting. We're gonna explore that by doing the same sort of sequence we've been doing by connecting our D shape to our C shape in the key of C and then also in the key of G as in good. Our D shape in the key of G to our C shape in the key of G. We'll do the same thing as we've done before. We'll play each of those sequences twice. D shape sequence, C shape, 
sequence in the key of C and the same thing down in G, and we'll go around the whole thing two times. Let's start with our D shape in the key of C. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One more time. Two, three, four. Now get ready for your C shape with your root on the 15th fret. Two, three, four, root. Root, one more time. Two, three, four. Now to our D shape in the key of G. Two, three, four. Again. Two, three, four. To our C shape in the key of G. Welcome to day six. What we're gonna do is connect everything we've done. C shape, A shape, G shape, E shape, D shape, back to our C shape. Because remember, it's, it's a circle. Everything connects back to the other one, which is one of the amazing things about Cage. And I really want you to hone in on the roots and how the roots connect from one shape to the next. They're all sharing. So like the front part of one is the back part of the next one. The front part of the next one is the back part of your front, of your next shape. You see what I'm saying? They're all connecting. Um, and we'll, we're going to explore this through roots and through shapes. Be sure you're visualizing everything because that's really the key is see the shapes and then you'll we'll get into how you actually explore them down the line. So be patient, get through this part and it's going to set you up to make everything else, everything else easier. You really need a strong foundation to continue on. So stay patient, we got this, you're almost there. My homework for you today is three different lessons. These lessons are important to understand because it's, it's sort of the culmination of everything we've been doing. It's not just these shapes in isolation, it's not just visualizing those shapes and seeing those roots, but seeing how these shapes and roots connect from one end of the fretboard to the next. And they're all gonna be in the key of C, so you'll have a really strong foundation in the key of C, which will then set us up for success as we move through different keys. Make sure you really understand these three exercises before moving on. For exercise one, we're gonna go from one end of the guitar to the other and then back down. We're actually gonna do something we haven't done before, which is play the octave. We'll just be playing the chords for each of these. So we'll be playing our C shape in C, A shape in the key of C, our G shape in the key of C, which we'll break down into two pieces, lower three strings and higher three strings, E shape, D shape, and here's the crazy part. We're gonna actually play our C shape again one octave higher. And if any of these shapes, as you know, like feel funky, don't do them. You can always just like play your C shape and accept the open strings. Um, if you can do the bar though, do the bar. I know all of us have different physical, we're in different places with our instruments. So don't beat yourself up. If the shape is hurting, don't do it. So we'll play through this just one whole note on each chord, except when we get to that G shape, we'll divide it into two. So we'll do two whole notes from one end, back to the octave of C, back down. One, two, three, four. C shape, two, three, four. A shape, two, three, four. G shape, two, three, now the higher part, and G shape, two, three. Get ready for your E shape. Two, three, four. B shape, two, three. Now we get to the octave two, do this one again at the top, and C shape. We're gonna go back down now to our D shape. Mm. D shape, two, three, 
four, D shape, two, three, four, G shape, two, three, and the higher part of our G shape, two, three, get ready for your A shape, two, three, four, C shape, two, three, four. And now what I hope you're doing is visualizing and understanding and really seeing how these shapes are connecting from one to the next. Exercise two is now diving into the roots. We're gonna be honing in on just looking at these roots in each shape from one end of C, that first C shape in the key of C, to the octave of that C shape in the key of C. And you'll spend two beats on each root. So it'll sound like this, root, switch, root. A shape, root, switch, root. And you'll go from one end all the way up to the top. And just as a note, for your G shape, you have three roots. And for your E shape, you have three roots. All the other ones, you have two roots. So follow along with me from one end to the other, back down to the bottom, two beats per root. Um, one, two, three, four, C, two, A shape, two, G shape, two, two, E shape, D shape, C shape, C shape again, D shape, E shape, G shape, A shape, C shape. Our third exercise is putting together exercise one and two together. So we'll be looking at both our chords and our roots from one end of the guitar to the other in the key of C and back down. We'll strum our chords for a whole note and then our roots for two beats each. We'll do the same thing on that G shape. We're dividing into two. One, two, three, four. Top part, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, two. It'll sound something like that. While I know this may feel monotonous, this is the part that counts, is putting all the information we spend so much time learning and understanding together because um, the next step is making some music with this. So here's exercise three. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, C. A shape. Two, three, four. G shape. Two, three, four. shape. Two, three, four. D shape. Two, three, four. C shape. Two, three, four. One more time. C shape at the top. Two, three, four. Back down to your D shape. shape. did that, then congratulations. That was super challenging. Um, you should feel good about yourself because that it's hard stuff to really see all these shapes from one of the fretboard to the next, and you're setting yourself up for success with this. Congratulations, you have made it to day seven. You've been working hard, it's been tedious, it's been monotonous, but if you're here, you've done a really great job of staying patient and going through all this material. 
And what I wanna talk about now is just making sure you really understand and you're seeing all the things that we've been talking about. How this cage system connects the C shape, the A shape, the G shape, the E shape, and the D shape together. And it's a circle like that. Doesn't matter what key you're in. And we're gonna get deeper into that in the next level. So stay tuned for that. And cause we've mostly been in C for all of that. Um, you know, seeing how this C shape connects to your A shape and how these roots are part of that, that story of how that all happens. The front part of your C shape is the back part of your A shape. The front part of your A shape is the back part of your G shape. That front part of your G shape, which is these two roots, is the back part of your E shape. Now the front part of your E shape is the back part of your D shape. And like we've been talking about, that circle happens. The front part of your D shape is the back part of your C shape. It all connects, it's one big circle. It doesn't matter what key you're in, which once again, we'll get into in later levels, but the thing to really see is the, how these shapes are connecting. The shapes are connecting, the roots are connecting, the roots are your guide. Just so you know what's coming up, we will be continuing to build on all this material. We'll be connecting the cage shapes in different keys and um, applying scales to them too. So you can start to improvise and create different melodies. This part that we're doing right now is the foundation of all of that. So make sure you feel really good on it. If you can do it well on the key of C, that means it'll be easier to apply to other keys. So to finish out this level, we're gonna do a few different challenges. One is a musical challenge. So we're gonna put all this material that you've been doing into a more creative musical song. And we also have a few quizzes. So be sure you feel good about all that stuff. It might take you a few days to get through because this is gonna set you up for success down the line for other levels. For this challenge, I want you to recognize what shape I'm playing and identify what chord it is. So here's an example. If I was to play this, I'd give you a second and then you'd be able to identify this is a C shape with a root on D meaning it's C-shaped D chord. I'll give you a bunch of these and a little bit of time between each one of them. Feel free to press pause so you can have a little extra time if you want it to. And also, please play along with me because I think that may be a nice way to not just see it, but also be able to do it. So here's your first shape. That is an E shape based off this E chord and their roots on an A note. So that's your A chord, E shape. This one is a D shape based off this D chord. Root is F, so that makes it an F chord, D shape. Now this one is our C shape, and you can either call it an F sharp note or a G flat note, same thing. So it's an F sharp chord or G flat chord in our C shape. That's an A shape based off our A chord, and the root is an F, so it's an F chord, A shape. so you can see how it's broken down and the full thing. It's our G shape with our root on a C note, C chord, G shape. We've got a few more still. That's our C shape E chord, because our root is on an E. E 
shape with our root on an F sharp note or a G flat note. Remember, those are the same things. You can call them either. So either an F sharp chord or a G flat chord, same thing, using our E shape. This is a D shape, D chord, but we moved it all the way an octave up. So it's a D. And one last one. It's a G shape with our root on an E. So it's an E chord using our G shape. For this challenge, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna play one shape in, any, in a different key, and you're gonna have to play the next shape's roots. So here's an example. If we're in the key of D, and I play my A shape, your job is to find the next shape, which, you know, if you always spell cage, that's how you know. C connects to A, connects to G, connects to E, connects to D, connects to C. So A shape connects to our G shape. So then you would play the roots in your G shape in the key of D. Got it? Get ready. Let's do this. Okay, first challenge. Here we are, E shape in the key of G. Can you play the roots in the next shape up? E shape connects to the D shape, so then I hope you went to this shape and located these two roots on our fourth string and second string. Great job, we got four more. Next spot, we're going to be playing in the key of E, our A shape. What's our next shape? Play those roots. After A is our G shape. So I hope you went right here and saw this shape and played those roots. Now let's try it in a different key. Let's try it in E flat, also known as D sharp, C shape. These roots right here, what's our next roots? What's our next shape? What are those roots? Play those after C. After C is A. So I hope you played that. Great. Next one, in the key of B as in boy, here's our G shape. We're playing all these roots. What's next? I hope you said this, your E shape, and you played these three roots. We got one more here. In the key of F, here's our D shape. Now remember, what happens after D? C, A, G, E, D. I hope what you did was go to your C shape, because remember, it's that circle. It goes back from our D shape roots. Those connect to our C shape roots. Thanks for checking out level one of this Cage Bootcamp. For the full thing, go to pickupmusic.com.